In this video, we are going to practice how to make a bar graph in Google Sheets and add customized error bars to it. This is going to be a little different than doing this same process in Excel. It's going to be a little more tricky using Google Sheets. So the first thing that you need to do is have your data all typed up. So you can see my data is typed up. At the top, I have average speed. Um, of different types of vehicles and so I have my speeds typed in as well. Below that I have my standard deviation for each of these data sets. The first thing that you will do is you will insert a graph without inserting any data on that graph. So I'm going to go up to insert, go down to chart, and I essentially just inserted a blank chart. The key to Google Sheets is the only way to customize error bars is to make each bar its own series. And so we will have to add the series one at a time. And so this is what really makes it quite different than Excel. So I'm just going to make this a little smaller and move it so I can still see my data while I'm working. So again, I need to add series. So you're going to go over here to setup. If you ever lose that screen on the right, you click on these three dots and you'd be able to go to edit chart. Same, same screen will show up. So scroll down to series. It says add series. So I'm going to click on add series. And I'm going to select my first series that I want to add. It's only going to let you select one cell and just the numbers for that cell. So I'm going to select my sports car data first, and I'm only selecting this single cell. If you try to select both, like if you tried to take the label with, it says no, one column required. And if you tried to take just the words, it tells you it's invalid. So I really can only pick. Um, the average speed. So I'm going to select OK. And now I have my first bar. Next I'm going to go down to add series again. You can see I have one series on there right here. I need to add another series. To do that I need access to the data. So I'm going to select this little box over here, select a data range. And now I can select my second value. So the value of the speed for the truck. Click OK. And now I have my second series. One more time. We need to be on Add Series. I need to add one more, so I'm going to select this. And then I'll select my final value. Select OK. And now I have three separate series. We do need to add a few things to this graph. Uh, we will go to Customize next over here to do that. For Chart and Access Titles, click this. You do not want to add a chart title. Remember, you're going to put your chart title directly in Google um, Docs because chart titles go below the graph and Google Sheets is not going to let you do that. It will force the title up at the top, and we don't want that in IB, so we're not going to put a title. But you do need to click this because it's going to give you more options, so click that. We want to add a horizontal axis title. So that's going to be whatever I want to title my overall horizontal axis, my x axis. So I'm going to title it Types of the pickles of the pickles because that describes sports cars, trucks, and school bus. Notice I don't have those labels for sports bar or sorry, sports car, truck, and school bus. Um, so I am going to discuss the issue with that in just a little bit. Then you're going to change this to vertical axis label and this is where I'll get to title my y-axis. So we're going to title it whatever makes sense for the y-axis. So in this case average 
speed in my unit is kilometers per hour. Okay, so we've got those labels. Notice we have this legend, and if a legend is not required, then it needs to go. In this case, a legend is not required, so it needs to go. So I'm going to click on, let me close this really quick. I can just minimize this to make it a little more simple. I'm going to click on legend, and under position, this is where I could move the legend, but I also can take it away. So I'm going to click none, and my legend goes away. Close that. To add the error bars, you need to go to series. So I'm still under customize, open up the series. The first box that come up says apply to all series. We don't wanna do that. That was the whole reason why we had to add them as separate series, because this is the only way to customize the standard deviation error bar in Google Sheets. So change this to your first series. My first series is column one. So I'm gonna click column one, And then I'm going to scroll down. For column one, I want to add an error bar. So click this. It automatically defaults to percent. We don't want that. We need to customize it. So click this, and you're going to change it to constant. Then in this value box, you're going to type in the value of the standard deviation for the sports car, which is nine. So I'm going to change that to nine. Whoops. Nine. Oh, there we go. Okay. Then I'm going to go back up. I'm going to change this now to a different series. Column two. That's my truck. Go down and do the same thing. Add an error bar. Change it to constant. Type in the value for the truck, which is going to be 15, got that value over here. Go back up, notice it's changing my error bars, they're different sizes, that's what we want. Go back up, change this to column three, go back down, same thing. Add an error bar, change it to constant, type in the value, which is five. There we go, oh, it did not, uh, let's do that again. Five, okay. Oh, no, percent. Constant, five. Oops, I keep doing extra clicks. Okay, so I have my error bars for all three. Now, essentially, that's all I can do, unfortunately, in Google Sheets. Um, but yet, there are still things that need to be done to my graph that make it better. And so, Currently, my overarching x-axis label says types of vehicles, but um, in reality, I need each bar to also have a label down here. And there is no way to do that in Google Sheets. It will either force a legend, which you're not supposed to have, or it does offer you the ability potentially to like label the bars somewhere else, but the bars need to be labeled down here. So that means you're going to have to do that in a different program. This is not a limitation in Excel. Excel will let you do all of it perfectly in like one swoop, but because Google Sheets um, has these types of limitations, we kind of have to work around that. So your options are if you have Paint, um, which a lot of Windows computers will have a program called Paint, you could use that um, or if you don't have paint you could try copying and pasting the graph into your google doc maybe or even microsoft word um, but like for like a little bit just temporarily if you're doing your whole lab on sheets and try and add the labels as text box um, I say Word because in Docs, I feel like Google Draw is kind of hard to work with and text box are more hard to work with, but Microsoft Word could be a good um, option. Um, even the limited version on your ClassLink um, dashboard 
um, which has office in it, remember, you could probably put this into Word there and try and insert the text box and then copy and paste it back into your Google Doc, or you could, um, and then screenshot it. If that didn't work, you could screenshot it from the Word Doc and put it in the Google Doc. But you do have to find a way on your device to figure out how you're going to get the word sports car here, and then the word truck down here, and then the word school bus down here. Okay, so if you have a program like Paint, I'm going to show you how to use that. Um, but before you can use Paint, you have to have a way to copy the graph. And Paint makes me like download the graph first. So I'm going to click on the graph. I'm going to click on these. Let's see. I'm going to go to download chart and I'm going to download it as a PNG image. Okay, so I have it. Now I'm going to open it. Okay, so once you're in your image, you click on these three dots and then you go to copy. Now it's been copied to my clipboard. Here's where I'm going to search for paint. And it just shows up, but you could type the search. Here's my paint program. Open that. And now I'm going to go to paste. And there it is. So once it's pasted into the clipboard, um, then I can add text to it. So here's my text box. Put it in here. You are going to have to make the font kind of small. And then you can start typing in. Oops, where did it go? Over here. So I have sports. Okay. Tis not typing letters. Okay, sports. Sports car. I'll keep that a little more. And then this one's truck. And then Finally, school bus. Let's see, you can use this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now we have everything nice and labeled. From here, you'd go to select. This is when you can copy it. Select what you want to copy. And then you'll go to copy. Now I have this. And now I can go into my Google Doc and paste it. And then all I have to do is title it. Another option is to maybe go into Word, like I said, and try and edit it there. Or Docs. I'm not going to try and Docs because I already know Docs is challenging to work with in regards to Textbox and Google Draw. But if you're better at that, have at it. But I will try in Word. So. Again, you need to copy the image, then open Word. So I have Word downloaded, but if you don't have it downloaded, you should be able to get it from your um, class link main screen um, in Office 365. So it's opening. Blank doc. Perfect. Let's paste. There we go. Okay. Now let's try insert text box. We'll try first just typing it and then I'll try and edit it. So sports car. Um, truck, school, bus. 
So then I needed to go on top. So for this little layout option, I'm going to click that and I'm going to move it to in front. Okay. So there's that. Then I'm going to change the shape fill to no fill. I don't want a border either. So let's shape outline, no outline. Now I'm going to move it. Let's see. That works out pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good as well. So there's another option to edit your graph um, to make sure you get it how you want it. From here, I would probably snip it if you have a snipping tool or screenshot it. I have a snipping tool on this computer, but my Mac does not have a snipping tool. My Mac also does not have paint, so I would probably do it in Word in my Mac, just like I did this time. And then instead of snipping it, I'd screenshot it and then crop it. So for snipping tool though, I'll go to new, and then we'll snip it. And then you just copy it. So I snipped it, I edit copy, and then I just paste it in my doc. So I hope that was helpful. Please reach out if you have any questions.